Um, so I was asked to speak today about mobile, and most specifically the opportunity within mobile RTB. Uh, so I'm very sorry to disappoint you, but I'm actually going to talk about something, uh, an issue which I believe is in fact a much larger opportunity for us as an industry. Uh, and that's something I refer to as the multi-screen connected audience. So we live in a multi-screen world, multiple connected devices. You've got a smartphone in your pocket, a tablet in your bag, a laptop at home and in the office. Never before has it been so critical in this world for advertisers to understand who that consumer is across multiple devices and create a single persistent view of that user in a privacy compliant way for more relevant targeting and optimization. Uh, when we really look about this, it's, it's ultimately not mobile. The opportunity here lies in mobility, in data, and in audience. Device is and must remain secondary. So what's, you know, the, the thing we need to think about, I suppose, and the challenge for advertisers and all of us really here in the room as an industry, is how do we take these various disparate data sets that we get from smartphones and tablets, both in browser and in app, and create this single view for better RTB optimization? My answer to this and, and the proposition I'm going to put forward today is to do this, we first have to understand mobile. But the challenge is, and many of us here know today, that mobile is still a mess. So let me give you 10 reasons why I believe mobile is still a challenge. So firstly, tracking is broken. Uh, as many of you know, the cookie doesn't really translate in the mobile world. Uh, we're still lacking a standardized, uh, unique device identifier to understand who a consumer is in an in-app environment. And considering more than 50% uh, of in-app ads are delivered, um, for example, uh, to gaming apps, we've got a lack of clarity and visibility over who that user is uh, in-app. So we need uh, better models to do this. There are interesting companies coming out with various probabilistic methodologies, but it's by no means uh, a complete or a, a consistent picture for us all. Uh, secondly, just leading on from this, I think privacy is still really a concern. There are a lot of large desktop players that are fearful to step into mobile. Uh, the challenge here is understanding, I suppose, in a world where consumers are still, you know, we talked about Mozilla earlier and third-party cookies being a challenge. Consumers aren't educated, really, about the cookie landscape. So as we, as an industry, if we're unable to understand these various probabilistic methodologies, being able to communicate this to uh, consumers is still a challenge. What's more, if you look at the performance advertisers, the guys spending hundreds of thousands of dollars in mobile marketing on a daily basis, the vast majority of the spend is still delivered across ad networks, typically 10 to 20 ad networks per plan. This is massively inefficient. It looks like digital 10, 12 years ago, and it's incredibly hard to scale. We need to shift away from a traditional network buying model and shift to programmatic data-driven buys, which is a pretty logical conclusion for most of us here in this audience, but harder in reality in mobile still. There's still an over-reliance on in-app traffic. So I mentioned more than 50% of in-app ads are delivered, for example, to gaming apps. Fantastic if you're a gaming advertiser. A little trickier if you're a premium brand trying to reach a premium audience or segment. Uh, the metric of choice still tends to be low-value CPIs. So advertisers looking for $1 to $3 app downloads. And whilst this can be a valuable metric from an attribution or a, sorry, an acquisition perspective, when we look at attribution, when we look at how do we segment our lifetime value, uh, uh, models around users, it becomes increasingly difficult. Uh, RTB is still in its infancy, so interested to hear what, what Paul and, and particularly with Twitter, how that's going to bring scale to the industry. I think RTB and mobile uh, has been evolving for the last two or three years pretty well, but the largest players, the largest agents in the space tool tend to be the networks that are bulk buying large chunks of inventory and, and you know, inventory is changing hands. We're still yet to really move to a scalable model where advertisers are leveraging first party, third party data and buying on an impression by impression basis. Uh, which leads me to the confusing technology landscape. So if any of you have ever done a mobile RTB or technology RFP, I think you will have probably uh, seen this. I think a lot of the large spenders, the large agencies and advertisers who I'll talk about in a moment, uh, even themselves will say it's still a challenge to understand Who's an ad network? Who's a DSP? Who's a technology service? We're still at a very early stage, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it can make it quite hard to understand this. Number eight on the list, transparency and data ownership, a personal bugbear. Uh, in a world of ad networks and uh, sometimes complex third-party vendors, uh, particularly when we think about advanced strategies of moving away from cheap, low-value installs, we need to be able to leverage first-party data to be able to take an IDFA or an Android ID of a user who's converted uh, and pay $20 in a certain app or, or service um, and shift that into smarter retargeting 
uh, and optimization models. But unless we can trust our partners and be sure that that, that data is basically kept proprietary, that's all obviously a challenge for scale. Uh, a lack of third-party data. I think we're seeing a lot of the large desktop uh, third-party data providers understanding and looking how they can shift into mobile. Uh, and whilst we do have a number of advertise, uh, of solutions, for example, AdMobius, Place IQ, and these kind of guys, um, a lot of them still tend to be very location specific or very US centric, which is hard if we want to try and scale global campaigns. Uh, which leads me to my final point, where are all the private marketplaces? We still in mobile need access to premium, high value inventory at scale in a controlled environment with, with first party publisher data to be able to enrich our buys. But I've given you 10 reasons why it's, a, it's still a mess in mobile. It's honestly not all doom and gloom. So let me give you three reasons now why I think there's cause for optimism. Firstly, credible technology solutions are emerging in mobile, whether that's tracking providers, the likes of AdX and HasOffers, or increasingly companies like AdTruth who are pioneering uh, probabilistic, privacy safe models for audience attribution in both desktop and in mobile. Uh, of course, third-party data providers, I said they are slightly too uh, location-specific at the moment, but we're seeing many more innovative companies coming into the space, which is only a positive thing. Uh, and I did promise it wouldn't be a sales pitch, but when I had to decide the logos for multi-screen RTV platforms, uh, AdBrain, I think, uh, you know, fantastic example of credible technology coming out to solve these problems at scale. So I just thought I'd throw it in there. Um, What's more, I think, when we talk about premium publisher landscape, we are maybe, you know, careful not to just think about those traditional desktop players shifting into mobile, but looking, in fact, at previous publishers like Rovio and Outfit7, who have incredibly engaged mobile audiences and are offering very rich, interactive, customizable, branded content and experience, uh, experiences for advertisers. Um, and, of course, we can't. No one's actually talked about Facebook and mobile today. I'm shocked. Um, Facebook, 70% of their monthly active users are on mobile. They've built a $2 billion uh, run rate advertising business in absolutely no time and have an incredible wealth of, of first party audience data that extends from both desktop and into mobile. So very excited to see the opportunities there. Uh, I built this deck before the Twitter MoPub acquisition, so I'd probably put Twitter, MoPub, whatever we're going to call them on there as well. Um, there are buy-side players really benefiting at the moment. So, you know, I could have put 20 different logos up on this slide. We've got, interestingly, homegrown British. It's not a British pitch here, but homegrown British agencies like Soma, Fetch, MNC, Saatchi, Mobile, who are scaling globally uh, with high spending performance advertisers in mobile. Uh, and again, Groupon, almost 50% of their revenue is now coming uh, from their mobile app. Uh, advertisers like Wonga, and of course we can't talk about mobile without talking about King, spending obscene amounts of cash in mobile advertising and doing so in an incredibly profitable way. So I'll leave you now with three key takeaways. Uh, the shift towards smart, data-driven audience buying is just starting to happen. I really believe that we now have the foundations from a technology and third-party uh, vendor perspective to be able to lay the groundwork. Uh, secondly, it's all to play for. Uh, I thought 18 months ago that the specialist agencies on the previous slide would have developed their trading desk strategies, uh, uh, taken a march against, uh, you know, similarly to the rocket fuels and, and media IQs and other of this world, but it's still wide open and we just started to see that change happen. On the flip side, for those of you that run trading desks and, and desktop display RTV propositions, that experience, that data, that insight uh, is ready to now be leveraged in mobile. And finally, which is the crux of it all, if we do this right, we don't just solve mobile. We learn and understand how to connect with audiences across all devices, irrespective of device, uh, and deliver more compelling and relevant advertising. Thank you very much.